Hi, and welcome. We are so glad you are here. And uh, I'm Mae Bush, executive coach, speaker, author, and CEO of Career Mastery. And I am going to be joined, or I am joined by my guest, Susan Drum, who I'll introduce in just a moment. Uh, but first, I want to warmly welcome all of you. As you know, we here are all about helping you advance in your career. And today we are going to talk specifically about improving your leadership and your life along the way. But leadership is such an important component of being successful in advancing in your career. So uh, as we get started, I'd love for you to type into the chat where you are joining us from. And uh, one of the reasons I wanna do that is I was saying to Susan how global our audience often is. So I wanna share with her just how global we are here. And uh, also I wanna make sure that the chat is working because Susan has graciously agreed to take questions from you. So at any time during our conversation that Susan and I are having, feel free to type in your question as it occurs to you, and then we'll take them all at the end. Uh, so let's have people type in where you are calling us from. Fantastic. Wow. Yes, Toronto. We have Washington, D.C., uh, Oxfordshire, UK. And we already have a question. Uh, will this be available afterwards as a um, recording? And the answer is yes. But of course, those of you who watch live are going to be able to ask questions live. So while we're waiting for others to tell us where they're joining us from, let me introduce Susan because Susan is uh, just such a wonderful expert and wonderful human being. Susan is a CEO advisor and leadership coach, and she's the author of the Leader's Playlist, Unleash the Power of Music and Neuroscience to Transform Your Leadership and Your Life. And her mission is to inspire and guide leaders to heal what holds them back and help them develop the capacity and mindset to lead in today's disruptive environment. What I love about Susan's work is that she draws on many disciplines for her work. And this shows up because just as an example, she has graduate degrees from the Harvard Law School, from Carnegie Mellon University, and also from the London Academy of Music and Dramatic Art. And she brings all of that to help leaders and today to help us. Susan is the CEO of her own firm, Meritage Leadership, and the host of the podcast and YouTube channel, The Enlightened Executive, where she interviews founders and CEOs on the most cutting edge programs, assessments, apps, and techniques in personal and leadership effectiveness. And she's coached billionaire CEOs, I love this, Susan, high profile political figures, prominent Fortune 100 executive teams, as well as incredible entrepreneurs that are setting out to disrupt the workplace. And today we are privileged to have Susan join us to share her wisdom and insights with us so that we can become better leaders and lead even happier lives. So welcome, Susan. Oh, thank you so much, May. Um, it's my privilege to be here with you. So thank you. That's great. Yeah. And um, by the way, we also have people from Paris as well as Buffalo and Idaho. So all over the world, all over the world. And I'm sure more and more different. And Most some people. in Phoenix, my hometown as well, where That's I am now. Right. That's <laughs> <Yes>. right. I <laughs> love it. So uh, Susan, let me start by asking you, what is the, the big idea, if you will, behind your book? Yes. It and it's marvelous, but in your words. Yes, it's quite a, a unique concept. You won't see anything out there like it, which is really what I intended to bring something really unique to the space of leadership. And first it looks at how we bring awareness to some of our deepest seated patterns that limit our effectiveness in life and in leadership. And understanding that those patterns develop in childhood as survival strategies. And they can become superpowers. They're usually what we had to overcome in childhood or the way we saw the world shows up that we use today in our leadership, but they can also be overused or let's say used in circumstances that aren't serving us anymore. Mm. And 
they become liabilities. And so we, I, in the book, I cite some groundbreaking research that was uh, identified in a book called Childhood Disrupted, as well as one called The Body Keeps the Score, and Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, which looks at how trauma impacts us. But then we, un, once we sort of understand what is this pattern, the concept of the book is to l- use music, both uh, figuratively and literally, to understand how to shift that pattern. And I bring in a lot of research about how music impacts the brain and how we can essentially use it to make change stick. Fantastic. And this is such an important point that you're making to make change stick because so often, uh, you know, I know the things that I need to change. Sometimes I'm told in no uncertain terms to please change these things. I'm okay for a couple of weeks, but then I go right back into my old comfort zone behavior. So uh, can you share a little bit about how music can make this, make this more permanent or, or can it make it permanent? Yes, yes. So um, music essentially lights up all regions of the brain. And it is a way to help prime the neurological landscape to help new neural pathways, which is how we learn, form more quickly and uh, form more strongly. So you can think of it like a brain hack. And the research on music, I mean, music um, it goes directly to this emotional core of us. Uh, and certain, certain songs do that for some people, uh, other songs, it's very personal about how it works. And if we look at the studies behind music, um, if you, there are actually courses now just on music and the brain in several universities, and it's this magical power. Think about um, recent studies that they did on Alzheimer's patients who were unresponsive. And when they put their favorite music on, they came alive. Wow. And that would, la- there was an increase in eye contact, in measurable increase in happiness, talkativeness. It was like they were back and communicative and connecting. And it would last for at least 15 to 20 minutes after the music stopped. So what is it about music that if it can create that, how could we then use music much more intentionally to impact what the changes are that we want to make in our lives? Mm. So uh, you're applying this to leaders and leadership, which I think is a really important place. Uh, and, And so for those of us who are, um, reading your book, uh, Most of us probably, well, I'll I'll have to admit, I am not a billionaire CEO. (laughs) (laughs) I may be an entrepreneur trying to disrupt things, uh, but let's just say that uh, (laughs) we're, we're, we're just normal people doing our best, both being led and being leaders, being in peers. And uh, so one question I'm wondering is first, how can, you know, how can we use this in our daily lives to be better leaders? And maybe before you answer that, start by um, answering the question of what are some of the signs that we could even be better leaders um, and therefore need to read your book? <laughs> yes, yes. So what can we look for and what, what can the book help us with? Yes. Well, you know, what part of the reason I wrote the book after I've been doing leadership development for over 20 years. And what I saw was the way leaders were reacting to whatever was going on in the moment had its roots in their childhood. And it was the way they were perceiving what, you know, whatever was going on in the moment, whether it would be things like they couldn't delegate appropriately to their team. It could be um, I'm having trouble retaining or hiring talent or I'm feeling a sense of overwhelm, or my team is burnt out and I don't know how to handle it. So that's usually where we start. It's like, where do you feel like you're bumping your head up against a ceiling today? Another path I might take is, where have you most recently been triggered? And let's explore that trigger. Because likely that trigger has its roots way back. And looking at, well, 
this is it's sort of this the the water you swim in you may not even realize it but yes. any person and, and what i say is this book is useful for any human it's like any leader so it doesn't have to be just these you know senior leaders any leader and frankly any human who's looking to transform and kind of gets you know in some sense like why does this keep happening to me that that if you ever have asked yourself this question like oh, i'm seeing this pattern like why does this keep happening mm -hmm. that's the place to really use it but we don't we're not always cognizant of patterns like i couldn't even see my own patterns and i've been doing this work for so long it wasn't until yeah. i really started applying this process that i could see it and that when you can see it you can start to shift it Wow. So when you said patterns and things that are happening, why is this happening all the time? You reminded me of that movie Groundhog Day, where yes. John Murray, they redo the same day over and over until he learns the lesson. Yes. And so I'm thinking that might be the one of the clues. Yes. 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 Uh, okay. Yes. Well, um, just thinking about if it's one of the ways to tell is when someone has gotten triggered. All right. And when you said mm -hmm. that, it triggered a memory uh, recently of all of a sudden I found myself judging a team mm -hmm. member. Now, my team is fantastic. I love my team. They are the best. And yet I, something happened and it just triggered me to start going, oh my gosh, that didn't happen. Well, if that thing didn't happen, if they didn't do that, then what about these other 12 things that are, so all of a sudden I was spiraling into this, judging and blaming, which is not how I want to be and not how I right. normally am. So is that an example? And if so, yeah. you know, how can you help this woman? Well, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so what I would have you connect to is, are what are the emotions when, when this occurred, you know, what, first of all, what were you saying to yourself about it? And you've just shared a little bit about that. So we like, what do you say about it? And then what emotions are you feeling? when this is occurring. So what, what is that for you? Like when, when you're in that space, is it frustration, irritation? What? Uh, you know what? I think I'm feeling fear that mm -hmm. it's all going to go to, um, I don't know how many four letter words I'm allowed to say. Uh, yeah, when I was back in the trading desk, I would have just been spewing these words. They've been going to hell in a handbasket. Yeah. Uh, right. And yeah. And this feeling of dread that, oh my gosh, what else? Could go wrong just this fear of things going wrong yes so, yes so what else could go wrong and i hear like it's all gonna go to hell in a handbag these are all sort of things you're saying about the situation yeah and your perception of is it is it truly that level or is it not and that's that's where we would explore now what I might say, or if we were working together, is I'd do a little bit more to say, where else does this feeling show up in your life? Mm. And can we trace it back? Like where else in your, right? So on the trader desk, I bet you had several experiences of this same yeah. emotional pattern showing up for you. Yes. And of all the places for you to go, May, a trader desk, like that's pretty intense work right? Like high, high stakes. Yeah. And the, it's almost like it was, it was there to let that, that let that pattern run its, run its course in it. Right. Um, yeah. And then we I might chose, even chose a line of work that would certainly, <laughs> yes, would absolutely trigger that wound. Would absolutely <laughs> like, like there, there's no coincidence that you, so I find it like interesting, like, huh, and, and yeah. so you take that back and you might look at, okay, and, and we don't always have to go all the way back to childhood, but sometimes people find it really helpful. Like, is there some um, place in your childhood where you first experienced things going to hell in a handbag? Mm. And what was that like for you? Which we don't have to go into now, but yeah. I would say that can sometimes be helpful because what I'm looking for is what was the statement you said about yourself to yourself mm. that I am what? Okay, okay. So uh, uh, true confessions here. Um, one of the other things I'm saying is, uh, you know, are, are we even competent? 
And uh, so I, I think I have a fear also of getting it wrong, being seen as incompetent. Uh, yeah. Yes. So the fear then, if we had to put it, is I am incompetent. Mm. Because if you didn't have that fear, it wouldn't be like, oh, I'm worried that that might be true. You'd be like, oh, I know it's not true. Wow. Wow. So I, if that was your, so that's what we call your old playlist. Yeah. And yeah. It, that might not be the exact words. Like you would. Yeah. You know, We're doing this that. on the fly, but yes. Yeah. Yes. Sit with that a little bit. Like, is it that fear that could be running me in the background? We're not always conscious of it. Right. It's yeah. like, and, and your logical mind says, of course I'm competent. Like, right. Like, no, like look what I've done with my life. Right. Yeah. But it's like, huh, well, why is that even coming up as a question? Mm. And the fear that the person that makes a mistake might reflect poorly on you and your competence, right. Is going to yes, truly. So that's why the trigger is there. Right. It's like, yeah. oh my God, my worst fear might come true if I don't get a handle on it. And so where we're using music then is both to interrupt that pattern. So what, what I might have you do from here, let's say it is, I am incompetent. And, and in the book, I detail the nine most common wounds that I've seen leaders okay. have. Um, but there are many others. So, but, the, but I tell stories about these leaders similar to what we're going through now and how we discovered it and how we shifted it. So we'd want to look at, what would be at least one song that could reflect that energetic feeling of being incompetent that you could use as a pattern interrupter? But one that captures that bad feeling. For you. Like oh. it best represents that. Okay. Right. So, and, and so, you know, I'll give you the example of how a leader, there was a leader, Deborah, that I worked with, and we determined her old playlist was, I am not welcome. Mm. And she decided to use as an anchor song, Adele's Hello. Because in it's like, you know, when she's singing Adele, it's like, hello, can you hear me? You know, like, please. <laughs> and it, it's it's a little bit like, you know, when, when she found herself going down that old neural pathway and how that showed up in her leadership was she got 360 feedback that she was always trying to insert herself into meetings and conversations and wanted to be copied on emails and felt like she was not included in the most important things. And people like, mm. we can't tell her about her every move. Right. Yeah. And so, but, it, but she's like, but this impacts me. Like I need to know. And that's where we started to trace back all the places where she felt not welcomed. And it was just that we were rearing its head. So when she used that song, when she felt the impetus to be like, oh, they left me out of that meeting again or whatever. Maybe it was like, oh, there's Adele. There's Adele again. Right. Oh, uh, OK. So that's what I mean by a pattern interrupter, because you can start to see the pattern when you start to pair it with music. I now, see. the real work in using music or leveraging music is to shift the pattern. So if we're shifting the pattern for you, what would you say a new, what would be a simple way to do is like, what would be the opposite statement or something that you would want to really groove in? I am what? What do you want that to be? Oh, this is really embarrassing. I have, I have a, a thought, but it's kind of embarrassing. Do I have to? <laughs> well, I don't want to put you in the spot, like in this, <laughs> okay. but it's, but it, um, so, so, so for me, it would be, I'm a badass. Oh, I love that. <laughs> no, that's brilliant. That is brilliant. So if the new playlist is, I am a badass, right? So now we want to look at, well, what's the music that best puts you in that emotional state of, I am a badass. Right. Wow. I don't even know. You know, I don't listen to that much music. I listen to some of this calming um, background jazz. So right. that's definitely not. I'm listening to the wrong playlist. <laughs> no, you can <laughs> like a badass. Yeah. If you just kind of turn on, you know, top 10 pop yeah. hits on Spotify and and fast forward when you don't see something or, you know, I I'm in my car and I have a like a serious XM type 
streaming service, yeah. I will fast forward through songs and find what is that emotional resonance. I could give you like Lizzo's Good As Hell. That's oh, a I great love that song. song. Yeah, so, I love that so song. you do know music actually. And I do, sometimes I do. you're like, well, I don't know, but you actually do. Okay. Because um, you've heard that and that's a great representation. I hear that song and I just want to be like, yeah, you know, right. get up and dance. Um, right. There's another one I talk about in the book that several of my clients at the time were using, which was Megan Trainer's Me Too, oh, that's um, a good one too. Yep. Which, is, which is a fun one. So, so part of that is then leveraging it to really continue to remind yourself of the badass so that when that old trigger comes up, like, wait a minute, I'm a badass. Like, what? Well, like, right. Like, and it's not to say, you know, yes, we have to pay attention to things and, and make sure, but my question to you would be how much is that getting overused that superpower to make sure that you got everything right? Is it being overused to the detriment of you and your team? Oh my gosh. I just had a realization. I just had a light bulb moment mm. and, uh, yeah, it's, it's that, uh, yeah, I, I can really drill down into detail to make sure it's all right. And that's I, I'm just having this insight has got to be driving my team completely round the twist, as they say. Uh, yeah. OK. All right. I see. So our strengths yeah. taken to extremes are our weaknesses. Yeah, they can. It, it, it can be right. It, it's, it's like you have to look at, am I overusing this? Yeah. Am I using it in circumstances where it's not really warranted? And if I am, most likely it's because of some egoic drive, um, which is a, a, a childhood wound. So really the book is about how do our childhood wounds show up on our leadership and how can we use music to help shift these deep, deeper seated patterns? I mean, we I, already know we can use music to shift state. And that's yes. essentially what music does. That's why we work out to music, right? It's like, oh, let's get, get some stuff pumped up. But what I'm talking about is if we can do that just there, we can do it at a much deeper level and use this is, music. This is so groundbreaking. And I'm the, the way you describe it, it sounds so clear and obvious that I'm, I'm thinking, gosh, why is this something I've never even thought about, never heard of? So thank you for bringing this into the world, Susan. Oh, um, yes, yes. I'm very passionate about it. And yeah. uh, obviously, awesome. like someone said, only you could do this with Harvard Law on one side and the London Academy of Music and Dramatic Art on the other side. Well, exactly. Well, the brain going. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I, and it, uh, somebody else, um, maybe it was you, I, I, because I've been reading your book. I was just recent, recently reading that uh, oftentimes our zone of genius is when we, when we have two different specialties and expertises and we operate in the intersection of them, which is really what you're describing. Yeah. You've got the whole, uh, I don't know which side of the brain, right brain or left brain, the, the one that's logical, the, yes. the other law school that's parsing yeah. through arguments, and then yeah. the other side of the brain, which is the artistic, creative music, art and dance piece. And and yeah, that's how you found yes. your sweet spot, which yes. by the way is a bonus tip for everybody, which is if you're operating in this intersection of two areas where you are really passionate that could likely be the clue for where you're going to be having the best career opportunities. But let's go back to the, the book and, and uh, this idea of um, using the music. And uh, we're going to allow people to ask questions. So please go ahead and type in any questions for Susan. She is ours for a little bit here. Um, so you talked about childhood wounds and uh I guess, curing them. What if you had a really happy childhood? Like I had a very happy, yeah. childhood. I had wonderful parents. Uh, I, I don't have a big dramatic story and yet I still can be a mess. Right. So, um, <laughs> what, well, I think, what kind yeah, of things I think are there, we talking about here? Yeah, there's certainly some have, have, and I talk about this in the book too, have had horrific childhoods that are incredibly wounding and have had to come a long way from that. They're awful, yeah. Um, and, and that's where some of the studies, the ACE study, Adverse Childhood Experiences study mm. came from and looking at the consequences of that in adults, you know, 20, 30, 40 years later, uh, mm. the propensity for higher levels of heart attack and stroke and all of that, all based on those. 
But what I talk about is we've all had wounding experiences of some kind. Like, I don't know any person that hasn't been wounded and it doesn't have to come from your parents. It could be like you were left out on some game or, you know, bullied yeah. by another teenager, whatever it may be. We had some wounding experiences. I feel like nobody gets through life without at least some of these. And yeah. I think there's different personalities that might just sort of poo poo that and be like, well, that's in the past and whatever. But it's, it's just kind of interesting if you start to trace back what's happening to you today and how it can be linked to that um, or whatever it is that you made up about it at the time. And you may not think about it now because it's like, oh, I didn't even realize I had that going on. That's what happened to me. I mean, this book was born out of my, using it for my own life and my own process of really seeing a pattern that I never knew existed. And, and so I would say whatever, there was some wound that occurred and, you know, just being more cognizant of understanding like how it shapes who you are today, both its light side and its shadow side. That's really what we're looking at. Fantastic. So we've got a few questions now. Are, we, are you are you ready, Susan? Drum roll. Sure. Oh, sorry, no pun intended. <laughs> um, sorry, guys. Uh, all right. So Tim, great question. I really like the idea of using songs to label and change your mental state. Do you advise to also use movement or posture to also manage your state or mood or so forth? Yes. Um, it's it, to involve the body could be a wonderful companion to it. That's why I'll often say get out in nature while you're listening to your new playlist. Um, also walk, uh, hike, you know, I, I, you listen to mine every time I went hiking up Camelback mountain, you know, I'll be like playing the playlist. I think it helps tremendously to add the body to it. Mm. Um, I think it helps us be more present as well. And that's essentially, that's why I say get out in nature because you're more present about the world around you and not so mm. kind of sort of stuck in the head and let the music do its magic. Fantastic. Yeah. Thanks, Tim. Great question. Um, okay. And Lindsay asks, can, oh, I love this one too. Can this book help my boss be a better leader, right? I've done all the work on me. My wounds are healed. What about that boss person? How can I get them to change? Well, you know, I write a lot I about a copy, like a, a early yes. present or Hanukkah present. Great holiday gift for your boss. Holiday gift. Yep. Love it. Absolutely can help. But uh, part of, I would say, is often people have to be open to coaching, right? And so in the book, when I talk about these stories, so often I would get hired and the leader would say, I just, just help me be a better influencer so I can get them to change. Because <laughs> there's always a them, right? And I'm like, I can't control them. Uh -huh. I'm working with you. So let's look at how you shift. And when your internal landscape shifts, your external landscape will shift. So that's our point of leverage. And, and so that's what we start to look at. So, you know, you can subtly give the, give the book as, as a gift and say, this is really fascinating. I thought you might like it. Um, particularly if you think they have an interest in music. Um, but even by the way, a lot of the leaders I worked with, they weren't necessarily music aficionados. They, they, they had never, you know, thought about using it. So it's, right. and, and I, that's why I say it is, look, music is essentially free. It's, you know, to some degree free, right. Depending on the streaming service or whatever you sure. use, but we have the power to access this um, and it's universal. Yes. And I think music is really freeing as well. Yeah. You know, I, as I was reading the book, one, one thought I had, you know, for, uh, for Lindsay and, and her boss, uh, I, I, I agree with you, Susan, as a fellow coach, you can't coach somebody who doesn't want to be coached or who hasn't asked to be coached. And you certainly can't really go to your boss and say, oh, boss, I think you need to be coached. I guess you could, but <laughs> high risk. Right. But one thing I was thinking is, could, um, could someone use it, read the book and start to recognize what may be happening for their boss? And maybe to, it, it might help us to not take things so personally. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, that I'm going to be honest, it had helped me understand also 
my, where my wounding came from, and I'm pretty open about this in the book, is my relationship right. with my dad. And his his wounding came from his family and his mother, right? So it just it does get passed down generationally, I think. Mm -hmm. And it's more about what we make. It's sort of the the meaning we give to what happens to us and what we yeah. say about it, right? So I think it will help because you'll get to see that. Look, we all have them in some form, some worse than others. And it was a survival strategy. And we have to honor that because they survived. They're here, right? And so oh. now the question is, well, do you want to evolve to a more enlightened way of leading? Mm. And and your out external circumstances may be calling for you to do that um, because you're kind of hit it in the wall at this point. Fantastic. Uh, so let's see. Okay, we have one more question. Just curious, Maureen says, are you a musician, Susan? I never thought to ask you that. And wondering if that influenced you. Yeah, so I am not a musician. Um, in the keynotes I give, I tell a little bit of a story how I wanted to learn the oboe. And I was unfairly mistreated and did not get to play the oboe and sort of said, I'm not playing an instrument, which was so disheartening to my mother because I, she said, I have a musical ear. Like my father played several instruments and he could play by ear. Oh, wow. What I got into was singing and um, which is why I end up, I did more acting than singing, which is what I did uh, at the London Academy of Music and Dramatic Art. But there was some singing involved in it. And I have this sort of uncanny ability to remember the words to every song. People <laughs> they're, like, wow. they're like bizarre, like put the song on and, uh, you know, if I've paid attention to the lyric, I will be able to recite them to you. And it's songs wow. from like, even going back like two or three decades, you know, <laughs> I don't know how I remember this stuff, but it, again, it's just triggering some neural pathway. And I'm like, wow, I know the words of this song. This is so strange. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. So um, I think those are the questions so far. And, um, you know, just in, in honor of your time, um, Susan, I, I, uh, I'd love to keep you here for the rest of the evening because there's so much cool, cool stuff that you can share with us. But is there anything else that you feel like uh, would be good for us to to know? And then I have one other thing I wanted to share about your about your work. Yes, yes. Um, well, well. First of all, I have two things. First of all, I wanted to thank you for being so willing to take this little journey with me and being vulnerable in what you experienced. Right. So, so thank you You're for welcome. doing it because it does require require that, right? It's, it's, it's looking deep. So you really role modeled that. Um, and, and the second thing is, you know, not everyone reads books too, or gets their information from reading books. And yeah. so, um, I just want to make people aware that I also created a masterclass on it, that if you go to susandrum.com slash masterclass, you can, go through, I'll, I'll, there's a workbook and I take you through a similar process to help you find your own. And there's a lot more, I think, background in there about mm. music and about the, the vibrational frequency of emotions and some really interesting information about the heart and how the heart sends a signal three feet from your body. There's all kind of good stuff in there. So that's an option for people, but ultimately I'm, this is such a mission for me because I really see in general, people are hurting out there. We are divided, um, certainly as a country, but also across the world, uh, you know, there's more division. And I think when you start to do this work and you heal yourself, that others experiencing you in a different way and they benefit from that. So it is, it is really a mission to me to up-level leadership uh, on the planet. We certainly have a, the impact of poor leadership on our planet is pretty evident. So um, globally, this yes, is my, my, uh, there's many ways to get there. And this is my contribution to trying to make that shift. Well, that's fantastic. So Susan, I, I um, think our team has a QR code up so that people can uh, find your book 
I know you've got some free resources that come along with it if they go to your website, which is where this QR code leads. And I believe that the uh, masterclass that you just mentioned is also available on your website there. Yes, yes. Fantastic. So I, I just encourage you to everyone to learn more from Susan. She is uh, really top notch. Her work is well researched and has helped so many people one on one and is now spreading around the world. Um, so with that, uh, I just wanted to thank you, Susan, for being here, for for sharing your wisdom and insights with us. I want to share thank you for being here and joining us to watch and learn from Susan. And we hope you enjoyed today's conversation and that you learned something new, that you got your golden nugget that you can take and apply right away. Uh, and again, please, I urge you to purchase Susan's book or take her masterclass, go on her site, get the bonuses and really uh, up-level your own leadership. And uh, frankly, this is gonna help me in my life too. Yes, <laughs> so yeah. Susan, thanks again. Oh, thank you so much, May. Really appreciate the opportunity. You're so wonderful. And I know the difference you're making to all this community. So thank you. Fantastic. So thanks, everyone. And uh, wishing you a wonderful rest of the week. And keep learning, keep growing, and keep going.